Depends how well this video does, I might make a video on German Puma as well. Never have I clicked on the like button as fast as I did now. Please make one on the Puma too. I love this. I would love to see a video about the Puma. More ifs, please. Do Puma. 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 I would highly enjoy a future Puma video. Great wit. Do Puma next, please. Please do the Puma. It is one of my favorite ifs. Since T15 video did well, I'm bringing you a video about the Germany's latest infantry fighting vehicle, Schutzenpanzer Puma. The title of this video might be confusing to you since I called Russian T15 Armata the best infantry fighting vehicle. And it is. But there are some things that Puma does better than T15. You'll see what I'm talking about. But before I go any further, a quick word from my sponsor, War Thunder. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and most immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus, a premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. Let's start with firepower. Puma is armed with a 30mm Mauser MK32 autocannon. You can fire APF SDS and airburst munition which is a programmable airburst projectile that has an option to have a narrow or wide dispersion of tanks and balls, depending on the situation. This kind of projectile is excellent when dealing with infantry, and is probably one of the best, if not the best, anti-infantry option for 30mm autocannons. The APF SDS is also decent, but it is something you can expect from a 30mm one, since those are made to engage lightly armored vehicles. The penetration is around 100 mm at 1 km, or 53 mm at 6 degrees to be precise. One really good thing about the autocannon of Puma is that it is open bolt double fed. One belt is comprised of EPF SDS and the other of the ABM, and the ammo type can be changed quickly since, because of the open bolt, the ammo is not loaded until the bolt pushes it forward when firing leaving the gun empty whenever you want to change the ammo type. Puma can also be equipped with a Mouse ATGM6 external module that holds two missiles. The best thing about the missiles are that they are fire and forget top attack missiles with a tandem shaped charge, which means they can deal with ERA equipped targets. I couldn't find the exact penetration of those ATGMs, some sources go as low as 700mm, but some go to around 1000mm. Nevertheless, both are enough when engaging the top armor. The secondary armament is currently the MG4 chambered in 556, but the penetration of 556 is deemed insufficient and there are plans to replace it with MG5 chambered in 762 NATO. Another great thing about Puma is its fire control system. Both gunner and commander have access to Attica third generation thermal imaging system. Attica can detect tank size targets up to 24 km and has a recognition range of up to 17 km. This beats practically any other thermal imager we have info on, and certainly beats the one of T-15 Armata. But it should be noted that the chances of tanks even fighting or even being able to see each other at those ranges is extremely low. But nevertheless, in situations where you can observe distant targets, it is more than useful. Puma, just like T-15, also has all-around cameras for the crew to look around the vehicle when buttoned up. It also has other modern equipment such as battle management system, etc. The protection of Puma is decent enough. The vehicle is protected with advanced modular armor protection, but the armor is not enough to protect it against the EPF SDS fired from main battle tanks. But that is the case with majority of infantry fighting vehicles. The protection provided by frontal armor is enough to stop 30mm autocannons, and heat protection seems to be enough to stop majority of rockets fired from handheld launchers, such as RPG-29 or something similar. The sides are also very well equipped. 
In its combat configuration, Puma is equipped with advanced modular armor protection and Clara explosive reactive armor on the upper part of the hull sides. On tests, older and lighter version of Clara managed to stop PG-7V rocket fire from RPG-7 almost completely. But that was, as I said, older and lighter version. It is considered that Clara and AMAP mounted on the side are enough to stop most of the rockets fired from handheld launchers. And since the information about Clara also states that it can stop 30mm autocannon fire, it wouldn't be unlikely that they aimed to have frontal and side protection be comparable in both kinetic energy protection and protection against shape charges. Puma is also protected with the Moose soft kill active protection system. This system is somewhat similar to the famous Russian Stora. The system includes laser warning receivers, which warn the crew when the tank is being painted by a laser, either from a laser rangefinder from an enemy vehicle or by a laser guided ATGM. Keep in mind that this is something not even Germany's latest Leopard 2A7 Wii tank has. To this day, Leopard 2 tanks have not received laser warning receivers. The system also has a jammer for wire guided ATGMs. There are also infrared smoke dischargers, which can disturb missiles with infrared and optical guidance. Keep in mind that unlike Stora, Moose can detect missiles using their emitting radiation through the warning sensors, meaning that any type of ATGMs can be detected by this system, making it very, very useful. Almost as useful as having a hard kill active protection system. There are plans to mount hard kill active protection system on Puma in the future, after the tanks receive it. But in my opinion, with a soft kill system like that, there isn't a great need for a hard kill system. Of course, there is still a threat of handheld launchers. Even though they most likely can't penetrate the armor of Puma, they can still damage the vehicle's modules, so a hard kill system would still be useful. Puma is crewed by three crew members driver, gunner, and commander. The crew is situated in the hull since the turret is unmanned, which increases their survivability. Puma can also transport six men into combat. The mobility of Puma is good enough for an infantry fighting vehicle. The vehicle in its combat configuration weighs 43 tons, and it is powered by MTU MT829 K501 diesel engine that can produce 1100 horsepower with the maximum 3800 rpm. This is not bad, but the maximum torque is not that good, being 2200 Nm. In comparison, the infantry fighting vehicle I called the best T-15 Armata has an engine that can produce 4747 Nm of torque, which is more than twice than Puma's engine can produce. Nevertheless, the engine of Puma is good enough. Puma also has automatic transmission with 6 forward and 6 reverse gears. Judging by this, Puma can go just as fast when reversing as going forward. Combined with its excellent side protection, this can be very useful. Now, one thing that Puma does much better than T-15 is production. There are currently over 300 Pumas produced, and even more are being ordered. Meanwhile, there are like 10 T-15s, maybe even less. Having the performance that it has and being produced in those numbers gives Puma a massive advantage over any modern infantry fighting vehicle. On technical level, it may not be the best, but being second best and having the production that it gets certainly makes it unmatched. I want to take this moment to shout out my friend's blogspot on German vehicles. He helped me out before with my videos on German tanks and he really knows a lot. So if you like German ground vehicles, I suggest you check him out. I will leave a link to his blogspot on Puma in the description so you can read more about it. Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles. Use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. At the end of the day, Puma may actually be the best infantry fighting vehicle in all aspects considered. T-15 certainly is the best if we analyze one vehicle only, but Puma beats it in production numbers by a long shot. And that would be all. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you can't, leave a like on the video or subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.